Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Today I have a Dell um, Precision R5500. It's not a server. But first, um, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Expo. Expo develops smarter network testing, monitoring and analyzing solutions for the world's leading communication service providers, network equipment manufacturers. They are market leading in optical testing. Expo has the equipment for the one man team in the field to check the real speed of a newly installed internet connection and the equipment that will tell you exactly where a 100 kilometer fiber optic cable has been poorly put together or is just bent too much. Links in the description, check them out. Thank you very much, other Morton in the data center. But here we have a rack mountable workstation. Um, and as said, this is the Dell R5500. And this is, well, it's a workstation for high security, like graphics work. Uh, when you have workers that is not supposed to take a copy of whatever they're doing or something like that and then and you want to have the equipment that they're working on uh, locked away in the data center that's a good use case for this um, so it kind of looks like this it looks very much like a regular server and um, it's not mine I uh, have a visitor here and this uh, workstation belongs to Fleming and uh, this is Fleming and Fleming brought his server so that I could see it and do a quick review video of uh, this little server workstation. Fleming bought it at an auction and it was about about $150 at this auction. It was really about $100 and then there is all kind of fees and tax and yeah crap. So in the front of the server workstation we have a regular dvd drive we have a information button uh, fleming has put in a little usb for his mouse but it has two usb ports right there and oh, it has the usual pull out with the serial number and the service tax nothing on the back power on button another little tiny button maybe in there i'm not sure there is a little holder that could be a reset no, it's, it's no. just uh, blinking blue all the time, so you can see it's operating. Okay, so and it has a similar one on the back part. Yeah. Oh, it has the the location LED button there. Okay, cool. Um, it has room for six hard drives. Uh, it's supposed to be able to handle five SAS. Is it five SATA? I'm not sure, but uh, funny enough, it can handle five of one of them and six of the other one which is kind of weird um yeah never came across that before uh, fleming has uh, put in an ssd in here and has already installed windows 10 on it we're not gonna power it up we're just gonna have a look at the outside because i have never seen this idea before i have been using this myself uh, for my video editing like having a server in the data center which I access remotely, but I've never seen the professional product for this. And this is more or less a workstation that they have put in a server chassis. So that's kind of neat. Uh, let's turn it around and see the back. I put it on a blanket here so that I can easily swap it around. And it's very server-like. Um, it has these hot plug redundant power supplies like a regular server and their regular Dell power supplies as well. Let's see if we can find the wattage somewhere. Uh, 1100 watts. That's, that's a lot of power. It needs a lot of power because it can handle multiple GPU cards in there. And we'll see that when we get into it. But on the back, it looks very much like a regular computer, but it's not. And when we come into it, we will see that. Uh, they put this handle, it's kind of in the way for the video work here, but you can kind of see it has some USB ports, it has a couple of network connections, it has a serial connection, then there is some sound here, a microphone and a loudspeaker out, and it has an info button, and it doesn't seem like it has a management port, I would have expected that, and it has a power supply, 
that's usually Dell has some funny thing. Oh, you can't see that. Dell has some funny thing with their rails back in the day when this was new. They had some power management arms with lights in them um, so that you could better see the location button if you press that. Um, but yeah, it has that. And you can kind of see it has a lot of slots here. I'm not sure if this one is occupied, but let's open up and see what's inside. So as any other Dell server, it has a nice uh, locking mechanism here to get the lead off. Let's see, no information on the lead. That's all as the usual thing. And it looks like a regular server, except on the back here, these riser cards are way bigger than normal. Normally they're like here and the CPUs are there. And so everything has moved to the front of the uh, chassis here. So let's see what we have. First we have the six drives here. Um, SAS and SAS and there is like two connectors from the... There's a rate controller down here that controls the SAS. Over here we have a the little management thingy here where... Um, yeah, there's a bootable USB and there is a little connection here that knows if I've taken the lid off. And when I do that, it's normal for the fan blowers to, uh, to blow full speed. Uh, apparently you can control that and the power on button is that switch right there then there is a muffler here or a device for managing the airflow and right now because this machine only has workstation I am tend to I might call it server because um, I'm used to that but it has a little piece of plastic here that has to be removed if CPU number two is installed here this server uses the Intel Xeon 5600 series and it's able to use CPUs all the way up to the 130 watts, which is the maximum power uh, that those CPUs are available in. So it can actually go all the way up to the 5690, at least that was what I read from their own material. But you can kind of see the RAM is here and the CPU is there and then this is in the way so there is a release button to draw this forward but to do that we have to kind of um, take these SATA cables away so that they are not damaged there and then uh, where were that that was there uh, two plastic hinges and we can forward this top tray and the cables will kind of fall along and we um, have a lot better view of what we're doing down here. Also, this fan assembly um, can go up. So you can take the whole thing out like that. Or you can take out individual fans if, um, if you just need to change one. Um, I don't know. I don't see fans failing very often anymore. So that's not a big deal. So a big PCB down here or system board. Um, Fleming told me that this is the Intel CN 5650, which is a six core, 2.67 gigahertz. And he got this server with 24 gigabytes of memory. So these six <coughs> slots here, each has a four gigabyte memory block. And this one is not in all the way, Fleming. Ah, so. Okay, fixed. <laughs> And then we have we have power for the system board. We have another power for the system board. We have another six memory slots up here for the second CPU if that is installed. Power conversion for the CPUs there. And a lot of cables here that goes up to the front of the rack mountable workstation here. Um, so there's not a lot extra down here. We have kind of seen everything there. So over here at the second CPU, they put in these uh, blockers for the memory. Uh, it's meant for as long as there is not a second CPU, like the air muffler here or blocker, so that the air doesn't just go through over here where there is nothing. So there is also plastic fillers that represent like a RAM block, so that the air does not go through here. And when you take them out and put RAM in, you don't change the airflow as much. So that's a very good feature to have that so that the airflow stays the same as you change the configuration of the server. It makes it a lot easier to calculate the airflow and stuff 
when you do that. So up here we have these humongous riser cards and uh, they have been so nice to put in blue lift things. So we put our fingers in here and we lift that up. And the cables for the graphics card, they're ready right there. There's an eight pin connector there and that is converted to two times six pins if, um, yeah, for whatever graphics card you need. I read that you should be able to put in two times uh, graphics card of 460 watts. Um, that's kind of a lot. So up here we have a riser card, the top one. Both of the connectors are X16, but the connectors down here is actually an X8 and this is an X16. So a double height graphics card would be able to fit right there. And up here, if you only have a single height graphics card. Beneath that, we have some more connectors and the back plane here seems to be something that can be replaced. Not sure why they did that, that's kind of weird. It's not usually good to have uh, more connections. Place here where stuff can fail, but it might be available in multiple configurations. So you can have different plugs out the back so you can replace the back of it. And you have a little half height riser card or it's a, it's not a riser card it's just a pci express port right there and x8 uh, so you could have like two 10g connections or whatever there so let's check the other one where fleming got some nice hardware there. Uh, there is a rate controller i am not sure what rate controller this is and i don't think we want to take it out it looks hard to get forth and back Somebody might know what that is, but he got a very nice graphics card here. That's the Quattro, NVIDIA Quattro 4000 right there. One U, one PCI Express port high. It goes down into this blue slot at the bottom here, which probably means that it's extra good, but it says down here that that's slot number four, and it's a PCI Express uh, G2X16, so X16, X16, and the top one where the rate controller is located is an X8. So you could put another graphics card right there and another graphics card over there in the other riser card. Okay, we took the rate controller out here. Um, yeah, I am not that knowledgeable about Dell rate controllers. I uh, can't find which model this is. It says up here that it's copyrighted 2007. The chip is an LSI controller. Uh, yeah, probably somebody way smarter than me is shaking their head right now. Please write in the comments which rate controller this is. Um, yeah, cool. Let's put it back in before we break anything. Okay, now we are at it. Let's just have the graphics card out as well. Did I get that? I get easier said than done. There, cool. And it's a, it looks like a regular NVIDIA Quattro. Um, it does look very nice. It's a very cool card. If he wasn't sitting in the couch over there, it might not be in there when he left. But, well, have to put it back in, he's watching. So here we get a really good view at this print card up here that looks very exchangeable. So you might be able to get something with other plugs, maybe well, a cheaper version or a more expensive version. Maybe it's available with something with management cards and stuff. But, oh, never seen that before. So let's put this back in. And the other one. And with the power connector ready for another graphics card or a very high powered card. Oh, we forgot something. Down here is actually two ports for onboard SATA connections. If you don't want to use that RAID card up here, you have it's more or less HBAs that are available right there. And then you have the set of connections for the CD-ROM drive. So more connections up there. Awesome. And we'll put that together. Let's put the front together here as well. We can start by putting back in the fan blowers. 
Okay, when I took the riser card out, these stiff cables uh, took this white uh, thingy off the PCB. It's uh, just, I could just click it back down, but uh, well, I got very confused for a second right there. Uh, so now we should be able to put the fan assembly down without any further issues. Yes. There. Okay, so now we have to connect the hard drives again here. That one. And I guess we have to put this a little bit closer for, to get this cable in. There. And click the front in place and cover up the CPUs and the RAM down here. I, it's kind of a really cool system they have made here, I must admit that. Uh, having two layers here, having the hard drives on top of here, um, and this very nice copper heatsink that looks so expensive. I paid good money for this one for the IBM X3650 Model 3 when I did those tests. So yeah, then we just need this air muffler. Um, me and Fleming had a lot of trouble getting that down uh, last time. We had it apart before I started the camera. So let's see if I... That was easy. Because you had alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to, I didn't have to battle him about it this time. So <laughs> cool. And we can put the lock <coughs> bag on. <laughs> so that was a good view at this Dell Precision R5500, which is not a server, but it's a rack mountable workstation and is used to put in the server room and kind of have a workstation uh, remotely. So I do believe that Dell has their own software available for this server so that you can remotely control it in the data center. I have no knowledge about how that works, but I do know that I just use remote desktop myself and it works perfectly. And my good editor Call in the Netherlands is able to log into my servers and remotely edit my videos. So um, thank you very much to Fleming for um, stopping by with his brand new toy and letting me um, take it apart. And uh, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day and I'm missing a hand for the waving. Bye-bye.